So today we're going to be creating a little bouncing ball program in Visual C Sharp. And to begin, we need a ball. So I'm in Photoshop and I will create a new document because this is going to be a relatively small graphic. I'm gonna start off with 100 by 100 pixels and 72 pixels per inch since I'm just gonna be putting on the screen. That's all the resolution I need. I can hit Control plus if I need to zoom in a little bit. And because I don't want white as the background, I'm gonna make a new layer down here right next to this garbage can. And on that new layer, press and hold on my elliptical marquee tool. And I can hold down my shift key and click and drag and draw a circle. And then I'm going to fill that now. I want that to have a little bit of a 3D effect. So I'm gonna use the gradient tool. And under the gradient tool, I'm gonna click on this radial gradient tool. And you can double click on this guy here. There's all sorts of different colors in here. You can go through whatever that is. And then if I click and drag, okay, and I can click on reverse if I want those colors to go the other way. So that's good enough. It's not that big of a deal. Control D to deselect. You want to click on the eyeball next to the background. And if you want this thing to be any bigger, you're welcome to hit Control T and then scale that up. You want it to be about the same size as your document so that you don't have any extra space around it. That'll work fine. And I really just need to export this as a PNG file. Now, when I export it, I can control the size. Actually, 100 pixels is probably a little bit big on my screen. This will show you about the size that that's going to be. So you can play around with this here. But if I go half size on that... Oops, 550. Let me just go percentage here. Let's just take that down to half size. That to me is about the right size for my ball. Uh, make sure transparency is checked and click export. And let's put this in our documents folder. And I'm going to call it ball. And I had one already called that, so I wanted to replace it. So let's move over now out of Photoshop. We have our ball graphic. And let's go into Visual Studio and create a new project. We want to make sure that we're using the Win Windows Forms app where we have access to the different controls within here. So we see Windows Forms app. That's the one that we want. It says C Sharp, Windows, Desktop. That's all the things that we're using. So click on next and make sure that you're going to put that in a folder on your, and this says defaults to the C drive and call it bouncing ball. And let's click on this little three dots here and make sure that when our, we're in our documents folder. So if for some reason we go to a different computer, it's not sort of saved just on my C drive. So when this comes up, we'll have a form. We'll put the ball into a picture box. And from there, we want to get the ball bouncing around the screen. And then we want to make it so that when we click on it, it adds to our score. So I'm going to walk you through those elements as we go along here. So here we are in Visual Studio. We have our Visual Form or Event Windows Forms apps loaded, and we need a picture box. So here's the picture box control. If I double click on that, it'll put a picture box onto my screen here and then with that pro that control selected i'm going to go over to the properties of that form or excuse me of that picture box and i'm actually going to call this pbx ball and then i need to go down to the image property and in the image property if i select that you'll see those three dots and I just need to go find my image. So I want a local resource and click on import and go find that. I called it ball, it's in here. And there it is. And I open that and bring that in. So now I have my ball there. I'll resize that a little bit and I'm gonna move that into the middle just to get started. And I have my form. And if I click on my form, it might be good if I rename this to be something like FRM ball or bounce. All right, here we go. All right, so the first thing we want to do is get this ball moving. And we're going to be using the top and left properties. Top works like the uh, Y 
coordinate and left controls the X coordinate of our shape. So in order for us to get this moving, we're gonna use another control called a timer. So if we go down here on the left-hand side in our toolbox and open up components, we'll see the timer. Double click on that, you'll get a timer in here and that timer will allow us to create like a game loop. I will double click on the timer to open the code up for the timer and you say, see it says timer1.tick. It's gonna run at a certain interval that we can uh, set in our properties and that interval is going to control how fast this loop works. Okay, so now we need a couple variables to control uh, how this is moving. Let's first of all look at it this way. Let's look at just moving the ball. Let's increment that. And let's say we're just gonna use 10, okay? And we'll do a similar statement here for the top. So this is how we increment in coding. We take the variable, we set it equal to that variable plus a value. So in coding, the equal sign means set equal to. So we're taking what's on the right and then setting it back over. We're gonna take what the, the value is of left, add 10 to it, and then assign it back to left. That's called incrementation. And that'll get our ball moving if I cl click start. But if you click start now, it won't move because if I look at my timer, the default property for enabled is false. So I wanna set that baby to true, and then our ball should start moving. Now that ball is gonna move, but it's not gonna bounce. Unlike scratch, we're not gonna have an easy if on edge bounce type uh, control that we can put in here. We, we need to manually look at the, we need to manually look at the edges of our form and where that ball is moving to. All right, there's the ball moving. Good, it's gonna go off the screen. So let's continue here, uh, going into our timer code here. And what I wanted to be able to do is make this change, but in order to make this number change, we need to create a couple of variables in here. Let's call it, um, we have two integers, a top change, and we'll set that equal to zero and, oh, not zero, 10. All right, so now we can replace these values with left change and top change. Now we can change those. So to change them, we need to look at our values. So we say like if PBX ball dot left, and what is, it's moving to the right. So we wanna say, say greater, let's just say 800 for now, okay? That's true, we wanna change left change, we wanna make it move back the other way. So we'd set that equal to say a negative value. And I can copy and paste this, I need all four sides. So here for when left change is on the other side, it's gonna be less than or equal to zero and I want that to be positive again. And here I wanna look at top and let's just say that the height of my form is like 400. Make sure that you change this to be top change to go back up. And then when it's on the left-hand side, it's going to be less than zero. And we want to set top change back to a positive value. And you can change these numbers up however you'd like to do so that uh, it bounces at different angles. If we're moving both the X and the Y coordinates at the same speed, it's going to move, you know, it's gonna move at this, uh, you know, always at a 45 degree angle, which is okay. Notice it went off the screen a little bit because of my width is probably a little bit more than 800, but we can actually make it so that we can alter our form. So we can say like this dot size, dot width so we can actually look the size of the form and then this dot size dot height and that way anytime I 
reload or move change the size of my form, it's going to bounce. Now, one thing you're going to see here is it goes off the screen, and that's because it's looking at, in here, the top left corner. So I'm going to need to make an adjustment for the width and height of my actual ball to make that bounce on the inside. So I'll let you work on that while I move on to the next section, which is I want to make it so when I click on the uh, when I click on this button it, that it works. So real quick, if I double click on my ball, what do I want to do? Well, I need a variable to set my score. So I'm going to set a variable here. And in here, I want to increment that. And a shortcut for that, if I want to say plus one, I could say plus plus. If I want to set it to something more than like one, I could say score equals score plus 10. I need to display that. I'm going to need something to display my score. So I'm going to add a label out here. Here's a label. And I want that. Oop, I didn't need to double click on that. I want this to be called LBL score. And I want its default to be uh, zero. All right, so I want this thing to be showing my score. And you can put another label in here that shows the, just the word score, kind of to, to describe that. But let's go into here. And now we need that to be displayed. Now I want to say like LBL score dot text equals score. Now if I do that, it's going to give me an error because it's going to say something like, hey, you can't convert integer to string. And because text wants string data, we need to convert score into a string. So to do that, I say convert dot to string, and then in parentheses, because that's a method, I put score. So now, save this, and, and I run my code. Every time I click on my ball, I'm going to get us, my score is going to change. Okay, so there's a couple tweaks here. You need to get the ball bouncing inside the frame, even if it gets resized. And... You know, we also want to think about something else, else, which would be, okay, after maybe I reach 100, this, the speed of the ball moves up. But that's the basic core to get you started on the bouncing ball. Uh, good luck, and hopefully that you have fun with this game.